afternoon when champions was common put their connacht title on the line against mayo now going into the match with both sides were well aware of the fact that was common had just about escaped from castlebar last year with the last minute point before going on to win the replay revenge for mayo then well let's find out with commentator jim carney the best possible news for mayo is that inspirational midfielder tj kilgallen is fit to start after being troubled by hamstring injury all season Kilgallen's steadying influence is considered vital for a Mayo team that otherwise retains Anthony McGarry at wing back. Has Liam McHale at centre half forward, Raymond Dempsey, their brilliant marksman of the previous round, at full forward, while Noel Durkin's place at top of the left is taken by Anthony Finnerty. Ross Common welcome back their four regulars who missed the semi final victory over Leitrim. That means a familiar look to the full back line, where Pat Dury returns to number three. Seamus Killoran is back to partner Big John Newton at midfield, and Paul Early is fit to take his place in the forward line again, alongside Tony McManus and Derek Duggan. The captaincy reverts to Tony McManus this afternoon. Ross Common's brightest star, one of the most celebrated players in the game, couldn't start against Leitrim when Des Newton led out the side. Well, the first half of the Connacht final was an eminently forgettable affair. Roscommon led by five points to four at the break, but it will be a half that will be remembered not for the football, but for this unsavoury incident, which led to the sending off of Roscommon left half forward Tom Graham. They restart as they finished the first half with Peter Butler of Mayo still the extra man playing at centre half back as a second centre half back and covering across the half back line. Well, Paul Early going hard for the ball there and uh, Mayo conceding the free. This is Derek Duggan into the wind. Sometimes it suits a kicker a lot better than playing with the wind, and there it is, it has suited Derek Duggan. And he's got a point that stretches uh, Ross Common's lead to two. Just as Derek Duggan takes the big ones for Ross Common, Gerald Jennings has a very good drive of a dead ball with the wind, but uh, that ball knocked through there and put into the net by Raymond Dempsey. Charles Jennings was looking surely to score a point. He was probably disappointed that that ball dropped short. And as it did, Ross Common fullback Pat Dury got into all sorts of trouble, lost the ball, Dempsey put it into the net. To Paul Early. Junior McManus has slipped inside looking for a, a high ball. Tony McManus has gone free too. Kevin Byrne challenging Tony McManus. Tony looking for the point. The class, the sheer class of Tony McManus. When Ross Common needed inspiration, it was their captain who provided it, just as he's done so often in the past. Tony McManus got first run on Kevin Byrne there. A lovely point, under pressure. Beautifully taken by Tony Mack. A change in the Mayo midfield, Kevin Staunton of Knockbore comes in for Sean Maher of Kermar. Staunton and Kilgallen now the Mayo midfield against uh, Killoran and Newton for Roscommon. Good ball to Anthony Finnerty in front of the goal. Finnerty is looking for a goal here. Sheeran gets a block, it's gone over the bar. It might well have gone under and the crossbars come down just as it came down 30 years ago one of the most talked about incidents in Connor football history Emda Colleran uh, you're no doubt looking back 30 years ago when that happened you were a young player playing uh, I'm not quite sure if it was for the first time for Galway and you were involved in that famous game little did you think then that 30 years later the same thing would happen at the other end of the ground yes Jim this certainly is clear when Aidan Brady pulled down the crossbar swung from the crossbar when the ball was going over the bar broke the crossbar there was a long delay while it was being prepared Ross Common got back into the game and eventually beat us the crossbar has been repaired the crossbar incident has held up the Connacht final by almost seven minutes. But referee Seamus Pryor, under darkening skies in Castlebar, gets play going again.
Anthony McGarry battling his way through for Mayo, having a good match, Anthony McGarry. Fouled, free to Mayo. Kevin Staunton, the Mayo substitute, with a terrific drive by Kevin Staunton, and it's gone in over the bar. Seamus Killorn has played with great spirit throughout. Gives a good ball to Paul Early. He hasn't been in the game all that much, Paul Early. Looking for the point. That's a very sweet kick by Paul Early. That's a delightful point. That's much more like it by Roscoe. Only a point in it as Junior McManus gets Ross Cannon going again. But here's Anthony McGarry. He and Peter Butler have played uh, so well. And Tomas Tierney in the uh, Mayo half back line. TJ McGallan's kick was blocked by uh, uh, David O'Connor. But Anthony Finnerty swings over the point almost effortlessly. Officially 11 minutes to go, but there is uh, the extra six, seven minutes, of course, for the broken toss bar. Mayo lead by a goal. It was the first time that they uh, got a goal lead. And now Kevin Staunton gives them a four-point lead with his second point of the game. And what an inspired substitution that was by Mayo. Now Mayo have Porrick Brogan in the match. And that will thrill the Mayo fans. He's a very popular player, Porrick Brogan, and they're delighted to see him back from Donegal. Kevin Staunton for Mayo. Anthony Finnerty, who's had a great match for Mayo, gives a good ball to Porrick Brogan. There's a point there for Porrick Brogan. That's a spectacular effort. And Porrick Brogan is absolutely delighted with himself. Tony McManus, trying to uh, dodge and burrow and weave his way through. And he has got a free, Tony McManus. And Tony McManus is content with the point. Kevin Burns, long kick towards TJ Kagan, well held in, the, in midfield by TJ Kagan. This is Tony Morley from Mayo. Looking for Anthony Finnerty, knocked down by Des Newton. It comes to Anthony Finnerty and to Corey Brogan. But between them, they let it go. So Kevin Staunton is looking for a point. And he's, and he's got it, Kevin Staunton. And that's his third point from play from long range, Kevin Staunton. Well, the knock more man delighted to get the chance when Sean Matter was called to shore. There's a male man down in the far, uh, on the top corner of the picture there. Kevin Staunton. Play going on. Kevin Staunton gets the point. The umpire has uh, told Seamus Pryor of what he saw. Seamus Pryor takes Des Newton's name. Almost seven minutes of... Uh, Time has been added on now. Tony McManus will try to get into a goal scoring position, but he's hauled to the ground. The young boy, Alan who was last on the ground, is now at As Tony McManus puts it over, that bridges the gap to six points, but we are now over seven minutes into time added on. Kevin Staunton, once again for Mayo. He'll remember this day he has scored three points to TJ Kilgallen, who can round off a fine personal performance here. TJ Kilgallen and a fine performance by Mayo too. It's been all Mayo, 15-man Mayo, against 14-man Roscommon, particularly in the second half. Nice little ball to Shane Kern. Shane Kern looking for the point. Damien Donnan to keep it in play. That he does, did it well too. And there's a, a 
bad ball in by Junior McManus, and that just about sums it up for Ross Cameron. It simply hasn't been their day. And in the 44th minute of the second half, referee Seamus Pryor blows the full time whistle. It's Mayo's Connacht Championship. One goal and 14 points to Mayo, 10 points to Ross Common. It was a disappointing Connacht final. It improved somewhat in the second half. But Tommy Grehan sent off for Ross Common in the first half. There was a little niggle uh, running right throughout the game, but it was the standard of football that was most disappointing. However, that won't worry Mayo. They're in the All-Ireland semi-final in which they'll meet Donegal. The scoreline today, 114 to Ross Common's 10 points. Well, you see many an odd thing in the course of the Sunday game season, but the crossbar coming down was certainly not one of the events you'd expect to see. Mind you, I bet Ross Common wished that it stayed down. Mayo, the champions in the West End, and now face Johnny Gall in the first of the All-Ireland semi-finals. But here are the statistics from that match. There were 44 frees given away during the 70 minutes in Castle Bar, with Mayo conceding 25 of those and Ross Common 19. Now, Mayo kicked marginally the greater number of wides as well, 13 as compared to Ross Common's 11. And the man of the match from that game was TJ Kilgannon, again, I think, emphasising Mayo's dependence on their vastly experienced midfielder. And you can see extended coverage of that Connacht final in the game on Monday tomorrow night, and that's at the earlier time of 7.30, by the way. Well, that's where today, Carlo Hurlers were brought down to earth in the Hurling Championship, and he hopes...